Hi, so I wanted to talk with you about the history of Tulum. So it was occupied as early as the 500s AD, but then it really came to prominence around the 1200s AD, all the way up until around 1520 AD, when the Spanish arrived. The architectural style of Tulum was referred to as the East Coast architectural style. The name Tulum means wall, and we'll talk about that wall in a minute. And then there was a name that was given to it later. Originally, the city was we believe it was known as Sama, which means sunrise or dawn. So the wall, there is some debate if they were used to control the classes and separate the elites from the peasants, or if they were used as a military, military usage. Personally, I think they were probably used for both. There is watchtowers on both the corners, and then there were three walls, and then the ocean, which was protected by the coral reefs, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, personally, I believe that the watchtowers indicate that they had a military use, but also I think they would have had a cultural use as well, with the elites living inside and the peasants living outside. And actually, even if we look at European history, we can see evidence of this. The, oftentimes, the elites would live in the castle, and then the peasants would, and farms would be outside the castle. But then, in times of emergency, the peasants would be able to come in and have protection. And also, we... With the Normans, we would have castles could be built obviously for for defense, but with the Normans, they would be used offensively as well to show that they're in charge and that they have the power. So with these walls too, they could have been used to show show power and show that the priests and all the elites were in charge and had that ceremonial role as well as a military role. But we're not we don't know for sure the use of the wall. So talking a little bit about the buildings, so the buildings with stone all around would have been the temples with, with stone roofs, and then the rest of the buildings would have had thatched roofs. And they also would have had a lot of bright colors, red, blue, and green. They wouldn't have been the gray that we see today. So the main pyramid in Tulum was called El Castillo, obviously by the Spanish, not by the Mayans. But that's the main building, and it did have a sacrificial stone, so they would conduct occasional human sacrifice of the prisoners there. Uh, with the Mayans, they only did occasional human sacrifice, whereas with the, the and the Toltecs as well. Whereas with the Aztecs, they were doing human sacrifice every day, so that's part of the reason for their expansionism. But getting back to the Maya, so that was an aspect of the society there, and then also the main function of the building of El Castillo has been proven to be that it was a lighthouse and if you had light the you could see the light from the from the building there from the coast and that would be able to guide the canoes in into the shore safely so that they could trade you would you'd have to line up the canoe just right so that you could see that you were on the right path so you wouldn't hit any reefs because uh, the reefs were a barrier but they also could cause shipwrecks if you're not careful. So the lighthouse was able to kind of guide the sailors on their way. And on the note of uh, shipwrecks, so the uh, first Mestizo family actually came from Tulum. So first we have Captain Juan Guevara, who was the first European to spot Tulum from the ocean. And as he passed it, he was recorded saying, uh, it's a village so large that Seville would not have appeared larger or better. And then later, we have Gonzalo Guerrero, who actually did shipwreck into the into the coral reefs there. And he he was in a caravel, and the ship the ship was stuck, and they were able to make it to shore. And when they did make it to the shore of Tulum, um, many of his companions were actually sacrificed Im almost immediately and there were two survivors uh, and he eventually married a, a princess there and that was the first the start of the first mestizo the first mixed race uh, family in in the whole world actually so, so this occurred before Cortez and Cortez actually sent a rescue party to go save this man and he replied, I already have a wife, and and he was a respected lord and war leader in 
by the Mayans. So he kind of said, no, thank you. I think I'll stay here with my lovely family. And speaking of the Spanish, so the city of Tulum actually was still flourishing when the Spanish arrived, which was unique for the Maya. Most of the Mayan cities had been abandoned long ago, but the city of Tulum was still thriving when they arrived. And then, of course, the diseases did take a toll on the population, and after about 70 years of the Spanish conquest, the city was abandoned, but some of the Mayans still returned to the temples to light the incense and to do certain rituals. So the Mayans have been referred to as the Phoenicians of the New World, although I'd liken them more to the Greeks with the city-states, and like the Greeks, they did fight each other. Certain key city-states kind of took the lead, and in regards to the military, salt was actually used to pay the Mayan warriors, uh, much like it was in Rome. So salt was important across the world. In Austria, they have Salzburg named after salt. And it was important for the Mayans as well. Now, you would think that they would just process the salt right there in the city of Tulum, but it was actually Chichen Itza that controlled the salt, salt trade. Uh, other things that they used for currency besides salt, they also used feathers and cocoa. And then they were also trading a lot of other goods like uh, obsidian and jade and other resources as well. The trade would have been conducted by sea with the with the canoes using the lighthouse, which was important. Uh, but it was also situated along the Mayan, what they call the Mayan Highway, or Sac Bes, the White Road. So it connected to Chichen Itza and it connected to other important cities. So it was a very important city for trade, both on land and sea. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the video. I hope you like it. And if you're interested, you can also see the history of Cancun. And, and thanks for watching.